Hey, what is going on YouTube? AA Ron here. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. Today we are in what I consider to be the best pound for pound destroyer in the game, the Z35. Now we all know that the German destroyers are some of the most versatile jack of all trade destroyers in the game with the exception of the z44 i truly hate that thing it sucks don't at me uh <laughs> i actually tried to run a more uh, torpedo focused blue fiora build and yeah it, it it turned out even worse but <laughs> besides the newest campaign z44 ship i really enjoy the german destroyers they are fun to play and this one um probably being the best out of them all mainly due to its extended hydro range at tier six with your concealment down uh, even a little bit lower, I think I, I took off Swirsky on this build. I'm not exactly sure of the build. I will try and put it up at the end here. Uh, you can get your Hydro nearly to uh, the range of your concealment, which is just a very, very um, tricky situation to put enemy destroyer players in. And what we mean by that is as soon as you're detected, if you were to hit your sonar, your hydroacoustic search there on the D-pad, they would be within the range and guaranteed detected. Basically like a stealth radar, but with sonar. I actually think that we are running Swirsky, but the concealments uh, were slightly nerfed for both Bay and Swirsky. So I think the new concealment is 5.2 with your hydro range being five, uh, five kilometers flat there. But enough upselling of this boat, which is not really the purpose of this video. Use code AARON for 0% off. We're going to talk about the strategy in this game because this turns out to be a fantastic game and an excellent display of this ship. Like we talked about, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I'm starting, I'm trying to do a few lower tier uh, games. But regardless, we worked our way into the B cap, and that is actually when we get detected. And it is not by the King George, it is by a Udachi with ultimate concealment. Gosh, you, you gotta love those IJN players running, you know, their concealment down, maximum torpedo build. But regardless, we use what we just talked about. And here again, I probably could have switched to the AP, but in the moment, uh, I just want to keep the trigger down. The guns are cycling on reload here. AP on broadside destroyers is always a great choice, especially in German destroyers. Uh, but again, the HE is is going to set fires and damage modules and there we actually get a permanent fire so it probably was better to use uh, HE especially when you know that they are on damage con but if you guys missed it that was the advantage that we are talking about uh, we picked up his torpedoes on the sonar and we got all you know half of his health for only a, a small chunk of our health which is what you want to you know to try and do in destroyers you always want to try and trade advantages right you don't want to go in there and just gun down each destroyer and you only have 1,000 health left. That's not the best way to play destroyers. And as we've talked about before, it is always a good idea to play destroyers, uh, especially even if you're a battleship main. Number one, you may find out you actually like being a sneaky destroyer. Number two, you know how they play. So when you are playing your favorite battleship, you can be more effective and not just be useless and complain at the back of the map. But regardless here, we have retreated. Something, you know, that every destroyer player, a lot of destroyer players could work on is survivability, right? Uh, they think that they have to get the cap, and this is a perfect example. I have to concede this cap. Why? There is a Benson right there. There is a Duke of York. There was that Udachi. And a lot of the other players, this was a count-in game where people, you know, we just counted in. This was captured a few months ago. They know who I am. Um, and, and not that I am the most popular. And, you know, of course, I have taught everyone to shoot at destroyer players. But uh, that being said, some people do give me a little bit of extra attention. So there is a perfect example of not, you know, putting my ship at risk to gain an unnecessary cap. I see it way too often, and I, I do respect when destroyer players try to get the cap early. That is what you're supposed to do, but they end up conceding their ship just to get the capture point, and then they die, and then it's captured by the other destroyer or ships 30 seconds later. That is not the advantage you want to have. Um, but here we are actually trying to set a permanent fire on this King George. We're using a little cheeky trick behind this little big island here, but this King George is not really... He, he didn't appear to be the most uh, the the most veteran player by by my standards so we're gonna we're gonna shoot him a few times try and get that permanent fire and also reset the cap now something to keep in mind is that Benson is in the cap it will take him longer to get the cap but the Benson has all of the cap points which is why you did not see that cap reset that much just something for you guys to know but if you you look at this game it is pretty even which again i haven't it took me a couple of months to, to to go back and find a game that was relatively even here and uh, of course we still have a few you know 
<laughs> battleship players going around that island there. Uh, if if you want to be very ineffective and not shoot your guns, go around that island on on Atlantic there at sea. Uh, but if if you want to be more effective, try and stay in the middle. I will say that this spawn is pretty rough on Atlantic. Y you you get out there at sea, and if you lose your you know your escort or your destroyer early on, you're just kind of hopeless out there, and you're free reign for those targets. But going around that island takes two to three minutes, especially in slower battleships such as the North Carolina. Uh, you know it's. T tier six battleships are not known for being the fastest. So um, my recommendation is just to sit there and try and develop a crossfire. But uh, another you know important skill as a destroyer is reading the map and you you know seeing what your team needs. There is an Atlanta over here, so we don't want to push into his radar range. That is an American light cruiser. We know that American you know cruisers in general have nine to nine and a half kilometer radars as we get another torpedo hit which we're we are guessing is on the benson a lot of those battleships are too far back to hit our torpedoes so it's just something to keep in mind it probably was not the udachi we probably would have killed him i didn't check the damage total and that is something that i almost impossible to tell in game but we are down to one smoke and one sonar so we need to be very careful with how we utilize our next smoke I was playing a game in the Farragut, I believe, the other day, and I completely misused my second smoke screen. Um, as our team actually does a good job of eliminating a lot of that Atlanta's health, I'm not exactly sure why the Atlanta put himself in such a tricky situation. We know that the Atlanta is a light cruiser, and while it, it does love to eat overpins, uh, going out in open water like that is definitely not the play. But a huge shout out to our battleship, who is behind the island there, and did actually get the finishing touch on that Atlanta. If you are a battleship player and you hate getting spammed, and and want your destroyers to do well, I suggest shooting at light cruisers. It's only going to help them out. Here is a little bit of a cheeky play because we are actually rolling into the concealment back here of this other battleship, and you can see that we are being shot at. It's not like we go uncontested this entire game. I wanted to shoot and go behind the island here, but unfortunately, um, we ran into the spotting range with our guns of this Brandenburg. But we stopped shooting, which is something that you know, other destroyer players could learn as we get very, I don't know if that was a main gun because it did so much damage, but we get, of course, our engine knocked and set on fire with that uh, final salvo or secondary burst from from that Brandenburg there. But uh, throwing out some zoning torps, getting one to connect is nice because we now know that a Seaf is probably on damage con. But back to the not shooting thing, I see it very often, especially in cruisers, players will just shoot nonstop and they won't you know, let their guns go dark so they can reposition. Um, it, it's very helpful, especially when you're caught broadside, just to stop shooting for five seconds and then and then reposition. Is it worth half of your health to get that extra 5,000 damage? No. I mean, I've been caught in that situation before, but this game is not that difficult. It, it does take some time and, and playing and getting used to, but after a while, you play the game, you realize, you know, some of these strategies, but you just see people at like legendary tier still doing this stuff. I saw it last night in Wooster. This guy just lost half of his health because he wanted to, I don't know, hold the trigger down. I, I guess some people enjoy the firework display, which is why sometimes those those German brawlers are are so. A lot of people, you know, they just find so much joy in playing them. But uh, it, it's far more important to, you know, especially if you're in a bad position, to to utilize your concealment and go dark. But if you'll notice, the team is pretty much even this game out. We are up one or a few one ship here and one cap. Um, so going back to the topic of talking about, you know, get, of conceding that Bravo cap there which doesn't matter now because we have both the Alpha and the Charlie Caps. Uh, and in the process, our team has actually done a good job. I will give a, a huge amount of credit to my team for eliminating destroyers. As Mr. Finney, best username, gets rid of the final destroyer here. And you're looking at this game, and, and some of you, you know, want to click off the video, but I suggest you don't. The reason being is this game comes down to the wire and is a lot closer than it should have been. Four battleships versus three destroyers and three other battleships should be an easy victory, but all too familiar with a lot of us, this game comes down to the absolute wire. It is a lot closer than it should have been. It's partly due to some, you know, lack of awareness and, and positioning on our part, but also due to the enemy's positioning, you know, themselves, which is why I preach positioning and map awareness over any other skill, any other build, any other whatever conspiracy, whatever you think is most important in the game, if it's not positioning and, and map awareness, then it's not correct, in, in my opinion, of course. But you know, what do I know? I only win 70 plus percent of the time setting XP records and scoring well on the board, but yes. 
I don't know anything according to, to certain forums here, but we actually utilized island concealment, but we wanted to pop our smoke screen. Two battleships are in our gun range. Well, one now because our team eliminated the other one. Um, and Mr. NOJ did just shoot there, so he uh, will remain detected due to his smoke firing penalty. Something a lot of players don't realize is you have a smoke firing penalty, even in destroyers. Something else a lot of destroyer players don't realize, as our one out on the flank here doesn't realize, is uh, he just smoked up to gun, but now we have absolutely no spots. Now, that's not necessarily his fault due to the fact that I also smoked up in the middle here, but I see a lot of destroyer players, and I've made this mistake before, will we'll kind of sit there in their smoke screen and not spot anything thinking, you know, they can just, you know, gun down everything. As you can see, this Fletcher, he just moved out of his smoke screen there uh, to, to get the spot there, but he did smoke up, which we lost all spots on Mr. NOJ there. Just something to keep in mind, and also something to keep in mind as a battleship player, if you see a useless destroyer player smoke up right in front of you gunning, stop shooting, go dark, if, you know, there's no other ships on your flank within your spotting range. Um, but if you are concealed, rush right at him. Yes, he may have torpedoes loaded, but um, if, if he's low, you can absolutely dev strike him probably before he can get a, you know get them off, depending on what ship it is, if they are positioned, etc. It's always a risky play, but it is much more effective than just sitting back, complaining, spamming the comm wheel, and not rushing that smoke screen. Now, again, as we've said in pretty much every video, all of these situations are, you know, all of these scenarios are situation dependent. Um, do, do you have, you know, uh, somebody else to spot, somebody else to shoot, etc. But uh, just something, you know, to keep in your arsenal. Uh, here, this Atkatsuki makes the absolute worst play uh, in Legends. Uh, no offense to that lad, but getting spotted by a battleship in an IJN destroyer is, for those who have been playing the game, that's like, I don't know, that's just like traveling in basketball or something, which is actually not really called anymore, but that's just like stepping out of bounds or, I, I, I don't know, it, think of the worst penalty you can commit in your sport, and, and that's just that's just what it is. It's just like a, the butt fumble with, with Mark Sanchez or something. Um, but there we can see that that Fletcher was open water gunboating with 2,000 health, and yeah, this game is now a lot closer than it needs to be. Why? Because we have a very low health Nagato, we have this battleship out on the flank, and NOJ is rather healthy himself. Also, I made a little bit of a mistake getting close to this Brandenburg, but we do have Mr. Finney here who's going to save my butt. I also think I was like telling him to go forward and just focus on the other guys because I had this rack of torpedoes. We also launched another rack of torpedoes on Mr. Asif out there, and you will learn here very shortly that they uh, do connect, and he had such a low amount of health that uh, he is now out of the game. But he had a huge impact. He dev struck that destroyer. And here, I make a little bit of a mistake. I thought this Brandenburg was going to turn in. I told Finney to go forward, so that way I can, you know, avoid... He can avoid blocking my torpedoes, which sometimes battleship players are just notorious for. They're just known for getting in the way, right? You big, ugly battleship players. But what I did not account for is this Brandenburg to go full speed ahead and not turn. And what sometimes happens is when they are going slower or turning, it affects the line, which is why you guys see me launch ahead of the line and something I should have done here, because I put those torps right on the line and he sped up and they absolutely missed. Um, but we have another rack here. And I really wanted to launch them, but you can see he is speeding up here. Mr. Finney is getting absolutely pounded. He's in such a rough spot uh, because that, that battleship, Mr. NOJ, can lob on the other side of the island. Here, once again, we put them right on the line. And, of course, this time, that is when the Brandenburg decides to turn. So... <laughs> just we've hit five torpedoes we've connected a beautiful set of torpedoes this game and you're not going to be connecting 10 torpedoes every game uh, but it's just funny to me how sometimes you you will put the torps right on the line and they will still miss I, I always try to predict what a smart player would do and that's probably the wrong thing to assume in this game now in this situation we were actually a little bit correct although the Brandenburg does see them it probably hits right on the torpedo belt but we do connect a nice torpedo which actually ticks us the high caliber in a destroyer, um, which is not really something you see that often. Of course, the occasional Shima player who gets his way around the backfield will, will have that. And here we launch another set. I probably should have waited because this guy is making a full turn. I, I also have the opportunity to shoot, but we know that the Brandenburg has good secondaries. And um, we don't have that much health to play with, which is why it is very important to save as much health as you can. But he is going behind this island here, so we're going to risk a few salvos. You can see the secondaries go off already. But what that does is it just resets the base. They weren't going to win regardless, but uh, I, 
uh, in all honesty, I probably should not have shot. It's so frustrating to see a win thrown at the last second, which is what this game came down to. You will see we are only up by 100 points, which if you think about it was only because we capped C, which is why it is so important and why I hate capture the base so much, but it, which is why it's so important to get those capture points and do your job in a destroyer. But a first place finish there with a 3250 total, but a huge first place finish on the enemy team for Mr. Asif there. And there you can see our build. I don't think I go over it, um, but my normal build for Mr. Bay is Swirsky and uh, Sims for the added health there, but I might've been running Mordoff for uh, the Elbing build. It's so frustrating that you can't, you know, specialize builds to ships, but I'm sure that's something that we'll see in 2027 when we get the Hindenburg. But guys, that is the pound for pound, in my opinion, best destroyer in the game, the Z35. An excellent pickup if you have it, something, you know, you can learn from if you're a cruiser or battleship player, and just a good ship to have in your arsenal. Tier six sometimes is, is it's fun to go down to those lower tiers, but a huge shout out to everyone in that game. I know a lot of you guys are viewers, a competitive game till the very end. And yeah, talking about the importance and uh, of destroyers and, and showing you guys some destroyer tactics. But uh, that's the video. Love you guys. You guys have a great day. Um, I think I'm going to be playing some Battlefield tonight, but uh, we'll, we'll see about that. Hopefully, uh, we'll switch up some games here. I'm just honestly getting a little bit tired of Legends, but uh, that's to be expected of a game you play uh, every single day. So, love you guys. Have a great day. I'm out. Peace.